January really is the Monday of the annual calendar. It's boring, it's awful, and I find it goes a lot quicker if you just watch movies until it's over. So to help you out, I've picked out four great films to watch on Prime Video that'll really turn your January into a Saturday. Up first, it's Whiplash, a film about a boy who's so bad at playing the drums that he will do everything within his power to get some extra lessons. After overhearing him practice one day, a local bouncer invites him to play for the orchestra he's headmaster of in order to ruin his life. Now we've all had those mood swingy teachers who one minute are throwing a chair at your face and the next are showering you with compliments. I will f you like a pig. But this one truly has a heart of gold and does all he can to make the boy a more confident musician, even trying to cure him of his horrible obsession with counting. One, two, three, four. Sponsored by Sweating, the film was amazing at building tension without even using any guns or bras. This was mostly down to the genius acting skills of J.K. Simmons, who won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his depiction of a man so desperate to create the perfect musician that he's willing to make the ultimate sacrifice of causing serious mental trauma to a bunch of boys. JK plays a teacher so muscly that the bin whacking stick fanatic does everything he can to impress him, from driving too fast to punching some ice cubes, and he even starts to look pretty cool until he finds out the drummer is the one in the band who nobody ever fancies and always has to sit at the back. I'm on it was a huge success and it saved loads of money by forcing the extras to play the music for all of the scenes. And although some people might dismiss it as just another boy meets drum romance, it really was brilliant and just goes to show that bullying children in the long run really will improve their lives. Now there's nothing we all hate more than when someone gives you the silent treatment, which is why this next film's baddie is one of the scariest of them all. Yes, it's The Terminator, the story of a pervert who travels back in time to have sex with a lady he found a picture of, using her endangered life as the perfect excuse. Come with me if you want to live. And all this while being pursued by a Terminator called The Terminator, who's come all the way from 2029 to stop her giving birth because he's frightened of her little future baby. Coming from a time where grumpy AI robots have taken over the world, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays this mixture of metal and meat who murders his way through the yellow pages until he finds the Sarah Connor he's looking for in this cautionary tale of the dangers of not keeping personal details private. Sarah Connor. It was a great success and launched Arnie into huge roles in such things as Total Recall and the US government. It also put the director James Cameron on the map and set up his lifelong obsession with having baddies that hardly say anything at all, like in Aliens or Titanic. Part of its success was that it wasn't just a violent film, but it had heart as well, with a beautiful love story, especially the bit where the man describes what he looks for in a lady. Flesh, skin, hair, Blood. But most of all, audiences loved Arnie. Men wanted his biceps and women wanted his breasts. And yes, it'd be a lot more effective if he was programmed to be good at running or firing a gun accurately, but this tin Austrian really was the ultimate danger machine and had absolutely no problem squeezing people's fingers too hard or shining lasers near people's eyes. Up next, it's Matilda, the story of an arrogant loner who spends so much time reading that she eventually turns into a god. Matilda is an ungrateful little brat who doesn't even say thank you when her brother offers her sweets I'm emotional. and finds it hard to bond with other children, preferring to just take her books for a walk. This pint-sized demon spends most of the film abusing her father by smashing up his possessions and making him pour bleach all over himself. Her sweet and overprotective family love her so much they don't want her to go to school, but Matilda rebels and heads off to meet the inspirational head teacher, who, although she suffers from severe anxiety and can't even afford a decent car, always manages to keep a smile on her face and even gives her last bit of cake to the pupils. Eat it! Despite the fact they're all nasty bullies themselves. Matilda Wormwood, appropriately named after the famously violent prison Wormwood Scrubs, finally meets her match in the evil Miss Honey, who manipulates the tiny witch into using her powers to commit theft for her, convincing her she's the only one who cares about her. You were born into a family that doesn't always appreciate you. This story by Roald Dahl was very clearly written as a way to trick children into thinking that if you bought more books from him, you could get magical powers too. And his nasty little gambit was a huge success. The cast was surprisingly good for a kids film, starring the likes of a young Mark Zuckerberg, 
the girl from Matilda, and Danny DeVito, who was also the director, narrator, and as you can see from this clip, the cameraman. Loosely based on The Exorcist, as is clear from the crucifix in the title, this chilling film has an equally strong message. For most people, if you were given magic powers, you'd put them to good use, but Matilda uses them for pointless tasks like opening her curtains and pouring herself milk. This lazy attitude to life eventually catches up with her, and much like The Exorcist girl, she ends up bedbound. Sad. Up next, it's Scorsese's long away to take on Wind in the Willows, The Departed. The story of a mole working in the Boston police and a rat working inside an evil gang of sugar smugglers, both sneaking around trying to catch each other. But it's not just ratty and moly telling porky pies throughout. Nearly every character in the film is pretending to be someone they're not, which is the reason why all of the parts were actually played by real life actors. Have I seen you professionally? And what great actors they chose. It stars Mark Wahlberg, Matt Damon, who are actually different people, Leo DiCaprio, and Jack Nicholson as the dreaded shoe killer. And their performances were all breathtaking. In fact, their Boston accents were so good, they didn't even understand each other for most of the film. Take a leave of absence. Take a leave of what? The criminals really are nasty pieces of work, doing all sorts from smoking indoors to talking in the cinema. And it all takes its toll on undercover Goody DiCaprio's mental health, so much so that he starts seeing a therapist and eating spaghetti in a sweet shop. With standout performances from Noel Gallagher and a chat with an explosive head, this two and a half hour film about texting was classic Scorsese, much like his other mob films such as Goodfellows and The Irish Man, and once again shows that he really does know how to make a film about boys. It was a huge hit, not only with fans of shouting, right. but the Oscars, and it remains the only Oscar Scorsese has ever won, and I'm not surprised. It really is his most clever and thought-provoking film to date. So there we have it. Four great films to kickstart your 2021 and really say rod off to 2020. Yes, it was an absolute stink fest of a year, but don't worry guys, there's a vaccine on the way. And that vaccine is movies. See you soon.